Director of Civic Engagement and Professor of Psychology. I know many of you and worked with many of you and I'm thrilled to be here. I'd like to introduce the Acting Vice President of Academic Affairs, Anthony Ucci, who's going to welcome you from the college. Uh, first off, uh, I'd like to say um, I'm really impressed. A uh, wonderful group of uh, students, faculty, community members, uh, very diverse. I see people from all sorts of different uh, departments and programs. Um, yesterday I was here for the, the co-op uh, breakfast, and, um, and, and I see many of the same faces, but I uh, see a whole lot of other crop of individuals as well, and it's really wonderful to see uh, the community so well represented. So uh, just have a few words. Um, I want to welcome you here to uh, Bristol Community College. Uh, and on such a beautiful spring day and uh, such a wonderful setting, you know, out here uh, on the, uh, the pond, um, we really don't take uh, enough advantage of it, so it's glad to see that uh, everything's out there and, and uh, so attractive. I um, was going to thank uh, Chef Caresimo, but uh, Mary already beat me to it, so uh, again, <laughs> a wonderful job. Um, one of the phrases that we use here at the college pretty regularly uh, is that uh, the, uh, being at the college is like being part of the BCC family. And um, I can't really think of a, another program on the campus um, like the, uh, like civic engagement that uh, better that better uh, you know embodies that sentiment. Um, it really is uh, a program that's about community building and about bringing people together uh, in a very supportive way. And I think it's uh, it's wonderful that we're able to get together here today to um, to uh, celebrate that. Um, one of the things about any family, though, though it's really essential for you to have a happy family that everyone is involved and everyone is um, contributing. And I think it's important that we recognize uh, some of the, the contributors here to this program. Um, first off, I'd like to thank the community partners. We have a number of you here today. Uh, without your support, your involvement, your guidance, you know, this program really couldn't be successful. Um, I'd also like to thank the students. Um, I see uh, a group of engineering students over there. Uh, I'm actually was a department chair of engineering uh, for almost 20 years, so uh, so uh, those are those are uh, sort of my peeps. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, but I see a lot of other people around as well, and, and it's it's wonderful to have all these students and all these students involved in these activities. Um, uh, lastly, I'd like to thank the civic engagement faculty and, and staff, um, uh, Dr. Mary Zahn, Jen Boulay, Rebecca Clark. Uh, Robin, Robin, Robin Worthington, and, and all the other uh, members of the college community that um, provide guidance, support, and, and really encourage these activities. This program could definitely could not be successful without that. Um, you know, we, they really do make the most of the students' experience and, and try to get the most for all these participants uh, out of that civic engagement experience. Um, one essential part of this program that uh, I'd like to um, point out, and, and, and it's, it's strangely, it's also true of co-op, is um, you know this is an, is an academic affairs program. And one of the things at BCC that we have said about civic engagement, we've talked to, said about co-op, is that this experience, this uh, you know, community outreach and, and civically engaged experience is, in a, uh, is a very important component of their academic experience. It's not, uh, a friend of mine used this phrase a couple days ago, and it seemed to, to sit well. This isn't something we sort of sprinkle on top of their, uh, their degree. Um, you know, the, the way this works and the way it works best is if someone uses their academic experience in their civic engagement experience, and then they can bring that civic engagement experience back to the classroom and really share it. So, uh, you know, it is, it is a very important part of their experience, and it makes them a much better, well-rounded, you know, uh, employee, uh, individual, person, family member, etc. down the road. So it's, it's very important. Um, I will say, in my experience here at the college, uh, civic engagement, when I first started, did not receive a, a great deal of, um, uh, of interest or involvement. And, and over the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, in part due to, to Mary, um, but other uh, forces as well, Civic engagement has really become a, a very big part of the university we have, um, of the college, I should say. We have uh, all sorts of different very public activities uh, that really bring the whole campus together. Um, 
And it's really wonderful to, to see this happening at this campus. It's wonderful to see, you know, not only the, this campus, but uh, the state and federal government and, and, and all different levels of, uh, of government involved in trying to, um, you know, uh, increase the prominence of these types of activities. Um, I think this is really especially true in, right, in light of the uh, recent events here uh, in the Commonwealth. Um, the fact is, uh, tragic events like this are, are horrible to experience, but at the same time, I think it really shows the importance of these type of community building experiences. You know, and, and I think what civic engagement really brings to the students and, and to the college is a sense that all of us are in it together. And so as participants, as members of the community, etc. So I think that's where the real importance of civic engagement lies, that we're all working together on this. Uh, lastly, I'd like to just bring some of my apologies for President Spraga. Uh, unfortunately, he, um, although he's extremely proud of civic engagement, um, he talks about it all the time. We, we hear it uh, regularly at events. Um, so he, and he um, is very disappointed that he couldn't attend. Uh, unfortunately, he had a community college presence event up at Prince Sigmund today uh, where he's representing the college and, and advocating for the college. He doesn't ever miss an opportunity to do that. Um, that being said, though, he, he never misses an opportunity as well to make a, uh, a public uh, appearance. Uh, in this case, it'll be a, a virtual public appearance. Um, so to that end, uh, can we share with, uh, with the group his... Uh, his uh, uh, presentation. Sorry, I can't be with you, but I asked uh, Professor Zahn if I could say a few words uh, um, remotely uh, to you. Uh, I am so proud of our civic engagement program and the great leadership of Dr. Zahn, as well as uh, uh, Jen Goulet. Uh, we, this is a wonderful program that changes people's lives and it changes the community. You know, uh, way back, uh, civic engagement was called service learning, and I always test uh, Dr. Zahn's patience because I never talk about civic engagement without talking about service learning, and I never talk about service learning without talking about that hyphen that's in the middle of service and learning. I think it's so important to emphasize the connection, the direct connection between your learning and the service that you provide, and the service learning is something that uh, uh, will enrich your education. Another of my favorite, favorite themes is to talk about holistic education, the BCC experience, if you will, for all of our students coming to BCC. And this holistic education absolutely incorporates uh, civic engagement activities that you do, and uh, it really enriches, I'm sure you will agree, enriches your educational experience at Bristol Community College. And so I thank you for your service. I also want to thank the employers and the uh, producers of the service learning opportunities, wherever they might be in the community. Uh, we're very grateful for their support. Uh, I consider them, because of their support, part of our, an important part of our PCC family, and I, I can't express our appreciation highly enough to them. I also want to, of course, thank our faculty, our expert faculty. They are the best in the world. Uh, the institution is only as good as its faculty, and uh, we have the best there is. And uh, their commitment to civic engagement, their commitment to service learning uh, is extraordinary. And every year it enriches uh, the educational experience of our students. We have uh, many, many, almost 100,000 hours of service learning hours that are contributed uh, to the community, the community benefits, and the education uh, experience of our students benefit as well. So I'm very proud to thank you. I'm sorry I can't be with you, but please know that I'm with you in spirit and keep up the great work. Thank you. who helped make this, this program a success this year, and that's why you're here, and I'm very happy to welcome you. 
We have lots of awards to give out, and so I'm going to begin uh, with those. Unfortunately, the first person on the list isn't here either. Um, acting Vice President Greg Satharis. And he has been Acting Vice President this year, and he has been so supportive of our program with money and reassigning time and encouragement and uh, kind words. So I wanted to honor him, and I asked Anthony to accept his uh, gift um, for his leadership um, this year. So you can tell him how grateful we are. Thank you. Anthony. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Suzanne Leone, she has a doctoral dissertation on service learning. So right away I knew we were going to be really good friends. <laughs> and we've been working together since August on grant work and uh, training service learning faculty fellows. And she's taken the lead on all of that and I'm very, very grateful. A true partner for the program. Thank you, Suzanne. I'd like to call Michael Hull, who was nominated by his students who are working. He's the acting first year engagement specialist. He was a student leader here. He worked in our office, right? And he was student trustee, and now he's back as acting first year specialist. And he was working with our students to create a peer mentoring program, which was sorely needed on this campus. And we're very proud of Michael, and we're happy to honor him. Thank you. Very much. And uh, as Dr. Sprague said, our program wouldn't be much without our service learning faculty. And so I'd like to honor Melissa Cardelli, who's the instructor in the early childhood education. Melissa has been one of those constant people who has been involved with her um, students. And this year she's been so involved with the Children's Museum where she has students and herself working there um, to create a wonderful spot in the city of Fall River. And so I'm very grateful to Melissa and it's a pleasure to honor you. We have another person who's not here. And uh, Suzanne, if you'll come forward. Dr. Dwight Giles, who's professor of College of Education and Human Development at UMass Boston and senior associate with the New England Resource Center for Higher Education, attended a meeting that we had to recruit uh, faculty to become service learning fellows. And he actually came to the meetings and helped to team teach those workshops with Suzanne. And so he wants to be known as an honorary faculty, service learning faculty fellow. But I told him that he's an honorary faculty member as well. So we're very, very thrilled with him. And he apologizes. He's in his 47th wedding anniversary in New York City. So I said, OK. And Suzanne will get the gift to him. Thank you very much. We'll probably be here next year at the breakfast. Um, we're going to also honor Tough Dental Facility at Northwoods Medical Center. And I can't be here either, but we're going to have Trish Cordia accept the gift for them. It's always impressed me is the fact that one of our alumni actually supervised the students at the place. And so I said, you know, I'd like to honor that person. But to busy people and they couldn't be here, so I asked Melissa to accept the gift on our behalf. Trisha. I mean, Trisha, I'm sorry. <laughs> Trisha. Trisha Cordier. <laughs> we also want to know you. Sorry about that. On the back of the program are people mm -hmm. who were honored in the past, and of course, Trisha was one of them. And the Fair Haven Council on Aging hosted some of our nursing students this year. We'd like to honor them and have one of the students come forward and accept the gift on their behalf. Because um, <laughs> we have students in the Trends of Nursing programs who go to a lot of the nonprofit organizations and teach public health. 
And um, Sharon Pirro has been on it for that. And with her students is here, we're very happy to see them here. And um, I went to their presentation last week, I think it was, and it was just wonderful. And so it's a pleasure to honor them. Thank you for having me again. And we're going to honor our new staff member, Robin Worthington. You please come forward. Um, Assistant Civic Engagement Coordinator in New Bedford. And we've been wanting to have somebody in New Bedford, and finally we have Robin, and she has been doing a good job there. Um, and we've been able to have college-wide service events, such as the Cinderella Project and the One Can Food Drive, and she's been representing us in New Bedford, and I'm thrilled. She's a former student here and a faculty instructor here, too, and so it's a pleasure to have Robin here. Thank I'd like to honor Mauricia. Where is Maurice? Maurice? Step up. Maurice here, as many of you know, Maurice, he's been very, very helpful to our program this year. He's been working in the office as an AmeriCorps student leader. He's a Newman Civic Engagement Fellow this year. And whatever else awards, I'm sure it'll be plenty of them. And we really um, could not have done what the work that we did in coordinating activities without Maurice this year. So it's a pleasure to honor him. And he was very instrumental in helping Jen Belay uh, put on this breakfast as well. So we're really thrilled to honor him. And now I'd like to introduce a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Matt Roy. <coughs> Who is, oh, I'm sorry, I've got one more award. On the same line, Brandy Evans. <laughs> they put it on the same line. Get up here, Brandy. <laughs> Brandy has been a student leader in our office as well, and she is one that worked with Michael Hall to develop the peer mentoring program and get that started. And she's an honor scholar here as well. And she had a baby this year, so she's doing it all. Um, but we're very proud of the work that she's done for us, and we're happy to honor her. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Matt Roy, who's Assistant Provost and Director of the Lagoon Center for Civic Engagement at UMass Dartmouth. And we've worked together for a, quite a long time. He is actually the person who gave me his syllabus for the honors class that I teach that many of you have taken and love. And we still use the same book that you recommended, and everybody enjoys it very much. So we're kind of like a tag team inspiring one another, and he's been an inspiration to me. So I asked him to say a few words. Thank you, Mary. And um, in typical Mary Zahn fashion, she gives you a job that's almost impossible, but then makes you believe that you can do it. So this is how the conversation between us unfolded when she asked me to speak here today. She said, Matt, could you speak to the students and, uh, and faculty at BCC at our recognition banquet? said, you have about five minutes, and I want you to say something inspirational. <laughs> I said, oh, great, Mary. But this is how she made me believe that I might be able to do it. She said, it was the students that suggested that you would speak. <laughs> now, let me tell you, as a faculty member, there's nothing that pumps you up more than to think that your students actually want to listen to you. So thank you to those students who suggested me as the person that might have five minutes to speak to you. So, now here's the challenge. Say something inspirational, right? Well, I want us all to reconceive our notion of what a hero is. So think for a second about how you think or what words come to mind when you hear the word hero. And what I'm really going to talk about today is two concepts. The concept of hope and the concept of heroism. I think most of us, when we think of heroes, our conception has to do with something that's either uncommon valor 
or uncommon courageousness, talking about running into a burning building and saving someone, or jumping in front of a bullet, things of that nature. And really, I think that, or I challenge all of us, particularly the students here, to reconceive our notion of heroism, and to think about the little things that we do that provide hope for other people. Because to me, that's what a hero is. It's a person who brings hope in an area that only darkness exists. So for instance, those heroes that do have uncommon valor, they run into that burning building. What's the first thing that the person or people in there feel? They feel hope. Hey, maybe there will be a tomorrow for me. For you students, when you teach a child how to read, you are bringing hope. When you go into the middle schools or the high schools and you teach someone that, hey, guess what? You can go to college because there's a thing called financial aid and I'll help you understand it. You bring hope. To my mind, Mary Tom and the people up here that just got awards, they're heroes. You folks, if you're sitting here today, you are a hero. I want to share with you, and I really, I, it, to me, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that, that they can't be here today. But I wouldn't be standing here today without a few folks in my life who have been heroes, but I'll tell you, I, I bet they don't know their acts of, their small acts that brought hope in my life. Before I do that, by the way, I do want to say that our, our virtual welcome from President Sprega, he's a hero in both sense. I mean, he's proven his uncommon um, uh, courage and valor, but also through his daily activities of bringing hope in our community, the small things that really uh, shine a light in that darkness for other folks. So, I mean, he's a hero in the total sense. But in that new conception that I'm asking you to embrace, <clears throat> the couple that have clearly um, touched my life and their BCC faculty. Professor Bill Kelly, who's an English professor here and has been for about 25 years, used to be, um, he grew, he, when I grew up in the south end of Fall River, he lived in my neighborhood. And we would go to the same church and I would watch his wife and him and himself bring their little children into church. And Bill would talk to me when I was a student at the Henry Lloyd School in Fall River, the middle school, about, I remember a couple of conversations with him about living a well-rounded life. And Bill is an avid runner, and now I've become a runner. How exercise can, can help you to live a well-rounded life. And also, how giving of yourself, so finding some knowledge, skill, and ability that you can share with others, is part of bringing meaning to your life. So, Bill Kelly, Professor Bill Kelly, brought hope to me. He showed me something that I didn't know existed before. And also, Professor Mike Fiore. Mike was my teacher in a media class at Derby High School. And he told me that, hey, maybe you can go to college. No one in my family had been to college. Maybe you can go to college, Matt. And you know what? You need to stop reading more, Matt. That newspaper, you need to read that newspaper. And how about some of this literature? You need to read that. He brought hope to my life. He gave me the belief that I could go to college. Do you think that Bill Kelly and, and Mike Vieira think they're heroes? No. Do we need to convince them that they're heroes? Yes. All of you are sitting here because Mary Zahm knows that the future of our community depends on you and you believing that you're a hero. Thank you. so they can hear that they're heroes. <laughs> uh, right now, I'd like to introduce Jennifer Blay, who's the Civic Engagement Coordinator, who's worked with almost all of you, 
And without whom this breakfast would not have really been held this year because we were short staffed and she did a yeoman's work with Maurice and Doreen Lingley, who's a former student of ours, um, has been helping out as a senior staff associate. And so I'd like to give Jen and Doreen and Maurice again a round of applause, if you will. Jen is going to pass out the President's Awards and other rewards, which she's been instrumental in making sure they get ordered. Good <laughs> morning. I'm kind of bummed out that I was placed right after Dr. Roy because that's a tough act to follow. So I'm just going to go right to the awards. <laughs> so I have the distinct pleasure of recognizing folks who have been involved in the President's National Volunteer Service Award. And that award is open to all members of the BCC community, faculty, staff, and students. And the basic criteria is that they have had to serve at least 100 hours of service over a calendar year. So each one of these folks, and it's actually printed in the program how many hours they've actually served, but each one of these folks has served at least 100 hours. And that's in addition to their coursework, in addition to their work schedules, in addition to everything. So I mean, that says a lot for BCC. So I'm going to start with faculty and staff members. Um, the first one is Amur, and I'm sorry if I wish it say, El Madani. Unfortunately, he could not attend, but he is an instructor in mathematics, so we could give him a round of applause. And our next recipient is Suzanne Buglioni. She is the Dean of the LASH CTL. And our next recipient is Sally Cameron. Sally is the Vice President of College Communications. And our next recipient is Richard Horton. He is an instructor in Computer Aided Graphics. members and they have received the Blue Award, which is the Lifetime Service Award, um, for completing over 4,000 hours of service. And when I mention their names, I'm sure they'll be quite familiar to you folks. Um, the first one unfortunately could not attend today, and his name is Dan Gilbard. He is a professor in sociology. However, his wife can certainly receive um, the award in his honor, but she'll be receiving one herself. And her name is Marlene Pollock, and she's a professor in history. <laughs> now we'll go on to the students. Um, I'm going to ask that you please just stand where you're seated. You folks will receive your actual awards at the Student Awards Night. So I'm going to go through the list of the bronze recipients. Susanna Blake. Now I'm going to recognize, um, this is actually the first year that we've offered the club award. So with this award, um, there are two clubs that ended up fulfilling all the requirements to be recognized with this distinct honor. The first one, I'll ask any members of this club if you could come up to the stage together. Um, the Engineering Club is the first club. The Engineering Club consisted of eight members, and they have a combined 519 hours of service over the past year. And then the next club, 
um, is one that we're all pretty familiar with if anyone has seen a production at the BCC um, Theater. It is Club Theater. <laughs> Combined 1,574 hours of service of um, the productions they've worked on over the past year. So now to recap, of the students combined, they served 6,503 hours of service in addition to managing their coursework. For faculty, they have served 4,776 hours of service over the past year. And in total, just for this particular awards program, that's 11,279 hours of service. So again, this is a national award. Um, we act as a certifying organization. Each recipient receives a lapel pin, they receive a letter from the White House from President Barack Obama, and they also receive a certificate. So now um, we have another awardee that I'll ask to stand who's here. Um, he did not necessarily qualify for the President's Award. However, he did serve this, uh, the same number of hours that one would be required to serve, so we have a new award to recognize him with. And that is the BCC Volunteer Award. Um, if Jason Sadie is here, could he please stand? No? Okay, he will receive the award at the Student Award tonight. And now, shifting gears, I have the distinct pleasure of um, passing the mic over to the honor student that I worked with this past year. Thank you, Tom Brady. That is Charlene Canyon. Said, um, my name is Charlene Canuel, and I want to thank Dr. Zahn and Jennifer for asking me to speak to you today. Um, just to give you a little background, um, I have many years of service as a volunteer in my church um, through the Red Cross. I was a member of the Civil Air Patrol, which is an Air Force Auxiliary. I worked at the PTO, the hospital, many different organizations, and there are so many great memories and times that I um, hold dear in my heart, and I cherish those times. But if someone would have asked me six months ago, sorry, um, if I would stand here and speak to you about civic, enga civic engagement, I would have looked at them and said, what? What is civic engagement? Because as the story goes, when I was trying to come up with a, a culminating honors project for the honors program, I went to Professor Grady, and I said it in front of the class, I said, I'd like to start an altruistic studies program on campus. And Professor Gray, he stood there, and he went, Charlene, you don't know what you don't know, but we have that here on campus. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so he said, let me put you in touch with two people who will help you and um, who will show you the way. And maybe you can turn this into a project. So he introduced me to Dr. Tom and to Jennifer, who ended up being my faculty sponsor. So, with coming up with questions, number one question is, if I was unaware, how many other people were unaware? I had a history of service, I had done all that, but I didn't even know that that was available to me here on campus. And that was my last semester, I'm ready to graduate. So that's what I did. I worked with Jennifer to come up with questions. One of the questions was, um, did you know about civic engagement? And what were the obstacles preventing students from participating? So I surveyed the student body, and I got about 200 responses, which was a good response. And with that, I asked those same questions. So I don't want to bore you with all the details of my project, but I just want to give you a little bit of knowledge about what I found out. And it was pretty interesting. I found that the obstacles that got in everybody's way for participation were the same as mine. About 75% of the respondents said work, school, and time were those things that prevented them. <laughs> And it's no wonder, because 77% of the respondents said they were full-time students. That's one thing. Another amazing thing is 64% are employed, with 74% of those respondents working more than 17 hours a week. So put in school, home, family, and work 
That's amazing that you can do what you've done. Happily, though, I did find out that an overwhelming number of respondents, over 80%, believe that they can make a difference by serving. And over 50% believe that participation increased their chance of getting to a four-year college or getting hired by an employer. I found out that 44% of the respondents had done some type of service, but only 38% were aware of civic engagement here on campus. So kudos to you, because you knew about the program and you were involved. So now we have to try and get all those other people involved, and that's one of my, um, my last part of my project, is to I come up with some strategies. So, like I said, you know about civic engagement. You participated in the community <laughs> service. You did service learning. You did a, a community service leader or the global leadership class. So I want to say thank you. We're here to celebrate all of you today and all you've accomplished. Through book drives, food drives, the mobile market, helping at the Forever Children's Museum. That's only just a few of the things. When you read the program, it's astounding. You have risen up the obstacles to serve your communities and school in amazing ways. You are the people that everybody should be looking up to. I look up to you. You know how it feels when someone says, thank you for what you did. Even if you don't hear that in person, you know that you helped someone somehow, and that's a real feel-good moment, a feeling you should be proud of. Some of my greatest moments, like I said, have been when I've served others. I especially love working with um, teenagers between the ages of 12 and 18. Most people would say, that's kind of crazy, why would you want to work with them? But I, just, I have a love of working with that age group. And I just want to share one experience with you. When I was in um, the Civil Air Patrol, I had the opportunity to work with cadets and teach them leadership skills um, through Air Force uh, customs and courtesies. But we get to take them on a camp at um, it's a little old army base in Narragansett called Camp Ronald. And every year we would take the kids to this camp. It was a week-long camp. But we would get to introduce them to things that they never got to do before. And there was, some of these kids came from really tough times, really hard lives. And I remember this one little boy, he was so cute. And he said, I really can't wait to go on a Black Hawk helicopter. Are we going to get to do that today? Are we going to get to do that today? And we went to the Air Force. Um, the Air National Guard base, and we got to go on that black helicopter. It was the first time he had ever done that. And I sat across from him in a helicopter, and we went flying around Newport and over the mansions, and he had the biggest smile on his face. He got off the airplane, off the helicopter, and he said, thank you, ma'am. That is the best thing I've ever done in my life, and I couldn't have done that without you. I mean, there's nothing better than that. That's why I serve. I can tell you so many moments like that, and that's just what has made me the person that I am today. Um, so it doesn't matter how many lives we touch, if we can make a difference in just one person's life, then you've made a difference. So continue to serve in some capacity. Don't let graduating be the end of it. We all know there is so much to be done, and we can make the better world a better place by doing. I read a quote by Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, the purpose of life is not to be happy. It's to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, and to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. I believe that when we give up our time and we get, share our talents with others, we not only better ourselves, but we better the world around us. So be proud of what you've done. And when someone asks you about the red cord that you were in at graduation, tell them. I was part of civic engagement. Get the word out there so that the participation can go up and more people will know about the program. Thank you. I must tell you, when I met Charlene uh, Thompson to the office and I'm sitting there. She comes to meet Jen and she says, I think we should have a leadership class here. I said, we do. I teach it and you're not in it. <laughs> and I joined. I said, okay. And it was a pleasure to have her in the class. But getting the word out is uh, what we all have to work together to try to do. Um, and right now, speaking of working together, I would like to introduce Rebecca Clark, who's the Assistant Director of Civic Engagement. And if you come up, please. 
and <clears throat> she's been representing us in Attleboro for I don't know, quite a few years now, and it's always a pleasure to work with Rebecca. And um, she was instrumental in doing the One Can and the Cinderella Project and all of the other things in Attleboro that gave us this new college-wide participation on some of these wonderful service projects. And she's going to hand out the Leader Awards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I want to echo my thanks to Matt. I think uh, he really hit a home run with that five minute inspirational speech. And, and I think as you've seen, we do have a lot of heroes here in this room. Um, the next few students that we're going to introduce and honor are definitely heroes. These are our student um, leaders, community service, service learning leaders. These are students that um, they've already completed service learning projects and now they decided they wanted to go to the next level and become um, student leaders. So they saw a need, um, they identified a project, something that they wanted to create. They recruited students, five students, to help them carry out this project. Um, and then um, now they're going to get their award here. These students will also receive their red cord that they get to wear at graduation where they will also be recognized. Um, the first student is Katie Ashworth. blankets for chemotherapy patients. Our next student is Charlene Canuel. Um, Charlene worked with Totes for Hope and Rhode Island Red Cross Youth Core Drive.
Next is Kevin Long. Kevin worked with the CPR. <laughs> Kevin worked with CPR training assistant for the Fall River Public School Department. Um, the next student that we want to recognize could not make it today, but we did want to mention him, Samuel, Samuel Presadio. Um, he worked with the Red Cross Blood Drive. Um, is he here? Oh, he's here. He is? Oh, he is here. Oh, great. Thank you. Come on up. <laughs> Kevin um, is a veteran and he himself had recently experienced a, a fire at home where he lost nearly everything. So we did want to make sure that we acknowledge that and recognize him. So, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next student is Ramana Uden.
and we're so appreciative again of your work. Um, we're 14 in total, so there were a number of folks that were not able to be with us this morning. But again, I hope that you'll be anxious to hear more and more about this exciting new program. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, I'd like to honor um, some community partners. Um, first of all, the Children's Advocacy Center in New Bedford. Is the representative for that agency here? Yes, would you please come? Citizens for Citizens, who hosts a lot of our students all the time. We're very happy. One of the programs they host is the VITA program, which is the Volunteer Income Tax Program for uh, low-income people. So our accounting students get a chance to do taxes. Um, it's another program I always highlight in the honor roll application as well. And uh, the Coalition Against Poverty, I understand we have representatives here. <laughs> so we'll have to send you a certificate because we didn't have it ready, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> we only got the RFPs printed out. But I'd like to point out that the people here are only a small portion of the people involved with the program. We had at least three or four hundred people doing service learning, community service, and they'll be able to get their certificates after the breakfast, um, even though they couldn't come here. Um, we've already sent out some by email. Jen's been uh, organizing that activity for us. And um, last but not least, I'd like to honor our advisory board members who uh, really are instrumental in guiding the program for several years. I talked to them about we need staff, we need a better room, and they said, well, you better tell people that your advisory board said, you know, and now we have staff in a better room. So they're my friends, and I'd like to honor them now. Um, and the guidance that they gave the program helped us develop and grow, and uh, we're really appreciative of it. And the first person is Jen Boy. And the next person is Kathleen Burns.
we've always had a representative from Bold, but he's new to our program because he's a new person at directing the program, but we're really happy to have his guidance at this time. And Michael Lasko, student representative. <laughs> Michael was a former student, student leader, student everything. <laughs> and uh, runner-up for valedictorian, one of the finalists for valedictorian, and uh, he's been doing a wonderful job for us. Um, last year he started a scholarship for STEM students in the Attleboro High School area, so we're very proud of Michael. Christian McCloskey, also a long Youth Services in the Fall River. And James Pelletier. I'll have to get that to him. It uh, must be something very unusual because he's always here. Um, he's a longtime supporter of this program, vociferous activist of this program, and so um, I'll be speaking to him. And Teresa Aronovich, she has to leave. She used to be the dean of the uh, New Bedford campus, and now she's in workforce development here. Uh, and she already told me that she wasn't going to be able to stay, so we'll make sure she gets her certificate. And Matthew Roy. <laughs> now Matthew Roy. And Maureen Soa, Professor of History. David Wien, Healthy City Fall River. <laughs> David is always at every event, filming everything, and we appreciate it. Uh, he was at the Martin Luther King Day, up at Gifts to Give, and every place we always say, send us your photos, because he takes great photos. So we always appreciate David's guidance as well. And Ron Weisberger. <laughs> long-term person serving before my time here. I've been here for a while, seven years. <laughs> Cynthia Wolf Boswell. <laughs> and Cindy has always, for like the past few years, has been directing the, the Be Enriched program at Tansy Elementary School. And she's also um, I guess taught, mentored a lot of our students <laughs> who've been working there, um, teaching after school enrichment classes. Um, it was a program that was started by one of our students um, oh, five years ago, I guess. Five years ago, and Jen Blay and uh, Doreen Langley were the first directors of the program. And then Cindy's been doing it for quite a few years, so we appreciate it. And Joellen Hunt, who's also here, has been helping her. We really appreciate that. And the last one is me, so I'll just do <laughs> And thank you very much, everybody. We really appreciate you coming. The advisory board meeting will be in L108 right after this program. Um, the rest of you are free to enjoy the day. We really appreciate you coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, but that's, you know, that's why I need Jen. She keeps me going. The student and faculty certificates will be able to be picked up over there. Thank you very much.